Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, good morning to the all of you. And let me say on behalf of the Atlantic Treaty Association, I would like really to thank you, the all of you, for being here. And uh, to the organizer, the Atlantic Treaty Association in Turkey, the NATO that is here represented, uh, to the all of you, really thank you for making possible uh, to convene in this wonderful uh, framework uh, here in Belek and to have made possible the organization of uh, this meeting. This is a unique opportunity, let me say, to engage with uh, senior policymakers, learn from top experts, and contribute to the shaping of a more effective uh, international policies. As I said yesterday, it's a, a special opportunity that is taking place uh, in a special place in this uh, extraordinary country that was uh, so relevant for NATO in the past and is going to be even more relevant in the future as we are going to discuss in the next session. But it's also a, a special opportunity because it's taking place in a very special moment of NATO's life, of NATO evolution, of NATO's adaptation. We are, as we mentioned yesterday, in a new very uh, complex uh, security scenario. In, uh, a scenario that is characterized by the uh, globalization of insecurity, and even if some uh, scenarios are making rhyme with the past, uh, with the Cold War of the past, the collective defense problems that we have today are more difficult in respect to the past. We have uh, new challenges and threats that are spanning from the east er, to the south uh, that are providing us with a fragmentation of perception of our security issues that are making it even more difficult to get the cohesion that maybe was more easy to get in the past. This is making also more difficult at sometimes when we look to the uh, kind of issues and security issues that we have today to explain to our public opinion and to and for our policymakers to get the, uh, the, the right resources, I don't want to speak here about the 2% of our budgets, but of course uh, to go in the parliament and to explain to our parliament why we, we have to be in one region instead to another one. This is making troubles also, more troubles for the military planning that sometimes was more or easier in the past. So there are many answers and many replies that we have to uh, provide to this new security scenario. And once again, we are here in Turkey all together and uh, the future generation, the future leaders like you, together with the present one. And let me say, as I told you yesterday evening at dinner, that this is NATO. This is the force of NATO. This is the reason for which NATO is here, because we are all together again committed for our enduring values for which the free democracies uh, in uh, 1949 was uh, gathering in uh, Washington and signing a treaty in order to preserve uh, these enduring values. Uh, if we look to the pace, let me say, and the speed in which our security environment is changing, this is absolutely astonishing. Let's take, for example, the NATO strategic concept that only five years ago has been adopted in Lisbon, and speaking about uh, the implementation of the uh, strategic partnership at that time with Russia, that in some way was something that we were uh, thinking that we will be able to uh, implement and look where uh, Russia is today. So again, the NATO has to adapt itself, adapt its instruments, not to adapt its values that are still there. And uh, as it has been made in the 50s, as it has been made with the Harmel report and after the fall of the Berlin Wall, and again after, let me say, the fall of the Twin Towers, once again NATO is called to, uh, to have a new strategic vision and to adapt its instrument. So this is going to make possible because the interaction, as I said, uh, between you and the, and the present leaders and because the enduring values that we are committed to preserve. And in order to facilitate uh, the discussion about NATO's policies and role in this rapidly changing uh, security environment, the Atlantic Treaty Association that I have the privilege uh, to serve has the honor of organizing uh, this uh, Youth Ministerial Meeting 2015. 
through this unique program, uh, young leaders like you will have an unparalleled opportunities to network with like-minded individuals, to engage in one-on-one -on -one conversation with senior officials, to attend lectures by policymakers on topics such as uh, threats at NATO's southern eastern flank, uh, hybrid warfare, Ukraine, and participate in policy workshop led by top experts. The policy recommendation uh, you will finish over the next two days should provide ways to improve the alliance and its policies to adapt and respond appropriately to the rapidly changing security environment. This actually is the role that ATA was playing since more than 60 years. ATA promotes democracy, facilitates the development of strong relationship among its members, and informs the public opinion about NATO and uh, its challenges and mission. ATA's activities today entail supporting the development of civil society from the Black Sea area and the Caucasus to the Mediterranean and the Middle East. And currently, our programs are involving 37 countries uh, while collaborating with NATO and its various programs such as Partnership for Peace, the Mediterranean Dialogue, and the Istanbul Cooperation Initiative. And looking to, this, uh, to the people, that, uh, the very selected people that we have here today, I'm very proud of the achievements that ATA was able to get in the past years. And uh, in particular, I'm proud when I recall that in 1996, uh, quite 20 years ago, let me say, I was uh, at that time uh, uh, more or less at your age and I was uh, Secretary General of the Italian Atlantic Committee that was uh, forcing the President like me today to bring in Rome at the General Assembly one young leader uh, to which I was offering a room like this and they put them for three days in a room like this and I told them come out with a constitution on the youth uh, regarding a possible youth Atlantic Treaty Association. And here is uh, the result. Uh, it's a result of an association that it's uh, bridging the gap between NATO and the civil society with a focus on the younger generation. And since the time the ATA's strong ties with the Youth Atlantic Treaty Association, uh, we have jointly organized many events to gather future leaders from the transatlantic community around their common interest in major international issues. For the last 10 years, we have successfully organized a future leader summit on parallel of the NATO summit. And today, for this is an innovative and it's a new uh, commitment, we have gathered you all on the sidelines of the foreign ministerial meeting to further our tradition. The Youth Atlantic Treaty Association strives to bring together the young leaders of today and tomorrow. And one of the YATA's core, let me say, mission is to influence through the facilitation of building bridges between policymakers and the youth. Today, the Youth Atlantic Treaty Association, and here I pledge the new president, is a forum for debating which its 37 member associations can realize their common interests and democratic goals, and it's committed to educating young professionals and promoting cooperation among the youth in NATO allies and partner countries in order to shape responsible future leaders who have an understanding of and are committed to the timeless values set forth in the North Atlantic Treaty. We at ATA trust that the youth ministerial meeting will become a central part of our mission of promoting responsibility in future leaders and bridging the generation gap by building meaningful and enduring relationship within the senior level official and young professionals. We believe that the youth ministerial meeting will equip you, the future leaders of the transatlantic environment, with the necessary knowledge, skills and network to ensure your future success in shaping a more democratic and peaceful transatlantic region. And on behalf of the Atlantic Treaty Association, I would like once again to thank you very much for being here and for participate, participating in the Youth Ministerial Meeting 2015. And I wish you all of you a productive conference and I'm looking to the outcome of your two days of proceedings. And now it's uh, with great pleasure that I open uh, this uh, ministerial, uh, this uh, youth ministerial meeting, and I hand 
uh, over to the chairman of the first session that I please ask to be here and to start with the, to moderate the, the first session. Thank you.